Greetings, humans. You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Command Zone. This is episode 38, I think, if we're splitting it into two. It is also the second episode on the Thursday of this week. Usually we come out only on Tuesdays, but we decided to do something special because it is Dragon Week. Dragon Week! Yeah, woo! I Dragon mean, how's it? How's it? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I'm Jimmy Wong. And I'm Josh Lee Kwai. Uh, and we are your hosts We got for too this excited about dragons. Week. Yeah, we did get too excited. Um... So if you guys listened to the episode on Tuesday, we talked a little bit about Dragons of Tarkir, and we also spotlighted one of Josh, spotlit, I don't know, spotlit, a, a new deck that Josh has built, which is a first draft deck of a Scion of the Ur Dragon deck. And it is actually a really fun take on it that is all Dragon Tribal and some other utility creatures. I encourage you guys highly to check it out if you haven't already. It's a shorter episode, about 45 minutes. Uh, but for today, we're going to do another Dragon Spotlight. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a shorter episode, but uh, I've brought something super spicy to the table. It's a spicy meatball. It's a spicy meatball. And it, this, the, uh, we're just going to go right into it. We're going to spotlight one deck today. Uh, and a uh, disclaimer, like last time, this is a first draft deck. So I haven't actually gotten to test this out yet, but I have fair, a fair amount of confidence that this will wreck some havoc when it, it does It looks pretty table. strong. I mean, it'll need some tuning, just like the, la the, mm -hmm. the deck from last episode, but this is a good first first pass. Yeah, so if you guys have any recommendations of cards that you like in this kind of deck or ones that I may not have thought of, make sure you post in the comments. Oh, in the crowdsourcing. Tweet. I like crowdsourcing. that. Smart, yeah, you gotta crowdsource smart. everything. Man, now your deck's going to be way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I should have well, thought of that. You kind of have every color to work with in your deck. <laughs> I only have three. Um, so the colors for today will be Teamer, because the general is Intet the Dreamer. Teamer and Dreamer actually rhyme. I don't That's know if you right. knew that. <laughs> He's going to be, I didn't realize that. He's going to be Intet the Teamer uh, <laughs> from now on. Uh, he is three blue, red, green. And he's a 6-6 six, six flying legendary creature dragon. Whenever Intet the Dreamer deals combat damage to a player, you may play two in the blue. If you do exile the top card of your library face down, you may look at that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may play that card without paying its mana cost for as long as Intet remains on the battlefield. Without paying its mana cost. Pretty good. I mean, so, if you've listened to the last 37 episodes of the show, <laughs> then you know that anytime it says without paying its mana cost, it's broken. Yeah. And uh, a Sign of the Earth Dragon does something very similar where it cheats uh, sort of creatures into play, essentially. Um, you know, honestly, though, I love Intet's ability. You could build an entire deck around it that's mm -hmm. just super degenerate, but I didn't go for that route. Um, I was more dragon tribal, and I just really wanted a dragon that were in the teamer colors. Um, also, kind of because I wanted to play the new Sarkin. <laughs> Which is has very much a lot to do with dragons because Sarkin is obsessed with dragons. Yes, absolutely. And much then, like I am. Yeah, and me too. Uh, we talked about our favorite things about dragons last week. Do you have any new favorite things about dragons you can think of? Um, yeah, I like uh, grilled camel wings. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What kind of dipping sauce goes with those? Oh, I, I mean... Blue cheese. Blue cheese. Yeah, blue cheese. Sprinkled with the tears of... Of, of my dead opponents. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Do you have a new thing about... Favorite thing about dragons? Uh, I can play Sarkin Unbroken in all of my dragon decks now. <laughs> I can... I don't know. That's I, pretty I, good, actually. Yeah. I mean, Sarkin is great. Uh, he is a... He costs two in Teamer, um, so he's actually one less than Intet. And his plus one is draw a card and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. His minus two is put a 4-4 dragon creature token with flying onto the battlefield. His minus eight is search your library for any number of dragon creature cards and put them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. His minus eight is you win. Yeah, it is straight up you win the game. Um, and this deck is built to take advantage of dragons, specifically entering the battlefield. So I moved away from the degenerate deck that is going to play like Enter the Infinite and stuff with uh, Intet hitting people. Uh, also because I just think it's kind of clunky to do that with generals that need to deal combat damage to a player. Right. by the time it's tougher. turn six and you get them out or turn five or whatever, and they may have haste, someone can just path to exile it. And, and if you're going to do that, why don't you just play Jaleva or Narset or somebody yeah. who's better at doing that? Narset is definitely much better at doing that. Um, so instead, I'm doing something that I love to do, which is flickering. And I love flickering dragon specifically for a ton of damage. So oh, it's yeah. dragon tribal with a little help from some friends like Kiki Jiki. And Dead Eye Navigator. Jimmy, wait, hold on, rewind. You built a deck with Kiki Jiki in it? <laughs> no. Pretty much. Actually, I remember when I changed my mono red deck away from Kiki Jiki, I had to get rid of a lot of these dragons because they just didn't work as well without something to be able to flicker them a bunch. Hold on, I want to tell you all something. He when he says that he moved his Kiki Jiki way deck away from Kiki Jiki, it means that 
Kiki Jiki, Kiki Jiki went from being the commander to being in the deck. <laughs> in the deck, yeah. It's not like Kiki Jiki was gone. Nope. He's why, still there. Why would he be? It's kind of goblin trouble. You know? <laughs> it's just, it's actually better yeah, because seriously. we don't know when you have it. Yeah, that's true. So it's like you all, a lot of times just got Kiki do something, I win, and we're like, yeah, you got yeah, it. Dang right. it. I wasn't ready. <laughs> That's right. I also want this deck to be as red as possible, so it's pretty much 50% red mana color symbols. Again, um, again, I could hardly see that coming. Yeah, right. Big surprise. Big surprise. <laughs> I went red. John went, Josh went five color. So there Hey, you we go. are who we are. We yeah. are who we are. You can't, you can't change who you are. Uh, so I had a couple of rules, too. Uh, but the main one is pretty much every dragon needs to do a two for one. It needs to do something when it hits the battlefield, and it needs to either kill something or deal damage to someone's face. And the more flexibility, the better. Nice. So, I like this. Our first category is 187 dragons. I'm going to start it off with Bogardin Hellkite. Six and two red for a flash flying 5-5 five, five dragon. When it enters the battlefield, it deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. So it does a super pyrotechnics. Yeah, super pyrotechnics. It costs a lot more, but it also is flash. And you can throw it in as a blocker to well, really it, mess up. It also damage. leaves behind a 5-5 five, five flying creature after it pyrotechnics. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty good. I mean, you can like someone can swing in and you can have this come into the outfield block and kill something that's even bigger. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can mess with the flash here because you can use it both as an attacker and a defender. Very cool. Yeah. Um, the next one I like, and also I didn't have this particular Dragon Lord in my deck, so that's right. It's good we get to talk about uh, him or her or her. Yeah. Who knows? A lot of them are, I don't know the gender, so I'm gonna mess. They that look up. like dragons to me. Yeah. <laughs> dragons don't really have genders when I look at them. They're they just, just giant look like dragons. And yeah. They breathe fire. <laughs> so um, Dragon Lord Atarka is five, a green and a red for a legendary creature, Elder Dragon. It's an eight eight <laughs> flying trample. <laughs> 8-8 eight, eight Flying Trample, that's pretty good for 7 mana. Yeah, that's really good. But it does the same thing. When Dragonlord Atarka enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers your mm -hmm. opponent's control. So it can't go to their face, but it can go to planeswalkers. Yeah, it's interesting, actually. I think a lot of the cards, and this is something to keep an eye out for as players, a lot of the cards reference planeswalkers now, specifically, yeah. that are in standard and stuff, and it's those cards actually have more value because a lot of the older cards, if, they, if it didn't say goes to you know target creature or player then you couldn't hit a Planeswalker with it. So. Sometimes you can redirect that damage. It depends on how it's worded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it is something to keep an eye out for because those cards are actually becoming more common, and I think they have some nice value to them. The next is the Scourge of Valkas. It's two and three red, so five total for a 4-4 four, four dragon. When Scourge of Valkas or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target creature or player, where X is the number of dragons you control. And it has fire breathing. I'm sensing a theme here. These yeah. all these guys are F, are flame tongue kavus. Yeah, they're all ready to come in and house someone. Uh, and it's just pure value because comes in, kills something, and sits, and then it sits there being a huge dragon. Pretty much, uh, and that's the goal, really. You don't want people to have creatures left on the board because if your dragons are getting blocked by a one one flyer, yeah, that's just that's yeah. lame. Yeah. Your your deck is way more Trogdor than my deck. <laughs> I told I'm jealous. You, I'm burning it. You the are land. burning it in the uh, crap out of everything. Right. Uh, and so those are the 187 dragons. The next category we have are the attack dragons. And the first one we actually mentioned in Josh's deck, it's a Tarka World Render. It's seven mana for a 6-4 flying trample. And whenever a dragon you control attacks, it gains double strike until end of turn. So this just sort of reinforces the idea that you just want, you know, if you're not going to be dropping creatures and killing people, you want to be swinging at them and killing them instead. Yeah. So and it Tarka. is good with Intet because it's just hard to block a double strike creature. Yeah. creature so it's going to incentivize them not to block into it and then you can get a free card that you can cast for free mm -hmm. so that's pretty great pretty good indeed yeah um the next card on your list i see is balefire dragon yeah this guy's fun balefire dragon is seven mana that's five and two red for a six six flying dragon roar um yeah i was gonna say something about we, we don't even have to say dragon anymore. Every <laughs> every creature is a dragon. I was wondering, I was like, awkward pause. What is it for? Josh, that's Josh trying to come up with something clever. No dragon. <laughs> uh, uh, they all dragon dragons. good. <laughs> um, okay. Whenever a Bellfire dragon deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. Yeah. So it kills all their creatures. Pretty much. And there's going to be someone you can swing at with the Bellfire dragon. Man, this guy um, with the Tarka is broken yeah he pretty much will wipe anyone's board and actually in lieu of actual board wipes in this deck i put in more of these dragons that can do this kind of effect more like kill all your stuff dragons yeah because i think it's it's 
one more flavorful and two more fun when you get to do that instead of just like wrathing or of one sort or another. Right. It's um, like you still have wraths, but they fit within your, your theme. Yeah. How, how Vorthosy of you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another big theme of this deck is that you want to be treat, uh, cheating, not treating. <laughs> you want to be treating out dragons. Uh, well, you, you want to treat your dragons well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like Khaleesi does. Yes. Yes, definitely. I really want to make a fake Khaleesi general because I feel like it's Kalia. But, yeah, it is but totally Kalia. It just has to be dragon themed. Um, so you need to have as much mana as possible. And Savage Vent Maw is also in uh, Josh's deck, but it's for a red and a green. It's from Dragons of Tarkir for a 4 4. Whenever you attack, you get to add three red and three green to your mana pool. And until end of turn, this doesn't drain or empty from your mana pool as steps and phases end. So that's pretty six powerful. free mana every single time this guy swings. You can pretty much get most any of these dragons out, maybe for just one or two extra mana. Most of them are going to come out for that six mana. Yeah, exactly. So you, it basically says cast a dragon for free from your hand mm -hmm. after he attacks. Yeah, it's very broken. And and with things like, you know, um, aggravated assault or, or other things that give you extra combats, he's extremely powerful. Right. He can actually go infinite. And we talked about that on our Dragons of Zarkir review uh, with a couple of things, enchantment specifically. So he's pretty pretty nice in that regard. I see another one of our friends on here, Scourge of the Throne. Yeah. We talked about him last week, but I'll reread him. It's four and two red for our creature dragon, five, five flyer, has dethrone. When it attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, you put a one, one counter on it. Also, if it attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, you can untap all attacking creatures and you get another combat phase after this one. Yep. So basically, if you're going the traditional beatdown route, Scourge is your man. Awesome. Like him yeah. plus any of the other creatures. Especially if you can give dragons. him haste somehow. It's just like drop him out, get two attacks. Mm -hmm. So you get to, to attack twice with all your dragons. Yeah, exactly. And the first time you have to be hitting the guy with the most amount of life. But chances are, if you're attacking with like three or four dragons, you're going to actually kill someone yeah. on that second and attack. And the second attack, you don't have to attack that same guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And not to mention, you can have Scourge attack one guy and then have all the other dragons point at other people. They don't necessarily all have to go at the same person. So you can you can be a little, uh, you can choose where exactly you want your damage to go. Very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have um, uh, Utility Dragons. And I think these are actually some of the most important. And Josh, I would love to see this on your list because I think this is totally up your alley. It's Null Spine Dragon, 5 and 2 red for a 7-5 uh, flying creature. You guessed it, dragon. <laughs> uh, when Null Spine Dragon comes into play, you may discard your hand and draw cards equal to the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. Wow. So this is a deck that is looking to get in a lot of damage. I mean, if they don't block an Atarka or something and mm -hmm. you just drop this guy and then do an additional like 20 damage to him, that's very easy to just kill somebody. Well, you actually you just draw 12 cards from him. Oh, is that what it does? Yeah, so you draw Wait. damage equal to the amount of Oh, you draw of cards equal dealt. to the damage. Yeah. yeah, sorry, 12 cards. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, let's say you're just running out of gas and you just hold one Null Spine Dragon in your hand and you just need to drop it at the right time and you are in business. Yeah, if you ever run out of gas, you're just... Boom, this guy. Yeah. So Null Spine Dragon is quite nice. Uh, and the next one on the list is Kiln Mouth Dragon. This dragon is 5 and 2 red for a 5-5. Five, five. It has Amplify 3. So as this creature enters the battlefield, put 3-1-1 counters on it for each dragon card you reveal in your hand. <laughs> and since we're only <laughs> talking so about dragons, timmy. yeah, your, your hand's going to just be full of dragons Hopefully, in this deck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it has flying, of course. And then you can tap this the Kiln Mouth Dragon, and it deals damage equal to the number of 1-1 counters on it to target creature or player. So let's let's recap here. If you reveal two dragon cards, mm -hmm. very modest, then it gets six 1-1 one. One counters on yeah. it. And so it either is an 11-11 and you just smack them for 11, or you tap it and deal six damage to anything. Yeah, which is pretty solid. Wow! You can pretty much kill any creature with six damage, I think, in, in this format. Also, They're if they have something crazy like a Maze of Ith or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, some way that you can't attack them, well, you just can tap and do six deal damage directly to yeah. them. Or more. I mean, let's say you have four dragons in your hand. That's 12 counters, and you're tapping it to deal 12 damage. Mm -hmm. oh, man, that's a game ender. Yep, and uh, I have a couple of cards on here called Wannabe Dragons, and that would be the Phyrexian Metamorph and Vesuvian Shapeshifter, which are essentially clones. They'll come in as a copy of something else, um, and they're just great to have in general. Just I always find I run the Phyrexian Metamorph whenever I can because... And you know, you're not running a ton of the legendary dragons, mm -hmm. so you can actually clone most of these guys, so, yeah. so it's very smart. Yeah, I thought about clones in my deck, but I had a lot of legendary creatures, so clones weren't as powerful in right. your deck. Very powerful. Yeah, especially when all my creatures have Enter the Battlefield effects to some degree or yeah. something. Um, now let's talk about the enchantment engine because the enchantments are also a very important part of this deck. 
Uh, and the first one we mentioned last time, it's Dragon Tempest. One in a red, whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under control, it gains haste until end of turn. So that's very important for all of these guys that tap to do stuff or yeah. just need to swing in. Uh, whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under control, it deals X damage to a target creature or player where X is the number of dragons you control. So that's a little, a little bit more best case mentality uh, scenario stuff, but... I just think it's better in your deck than it was in mine because mm -hmm. mine, like Scion, isn't actually bringing the dragon into play. Right, they're just sort of chucking them. But Intet is going to cheat some dragons into play. You're going to cast a lot of them, and so yeah. they're all going to get that enter the battlefield ability. Yeah, and the big one here is that, like Josh said, if they have a card like Propaganda or they have yeah. something that stops you from attacking, you're going to need to find other ways to get around that. And so the general premise of this deck was enter the battlefield dragons that have stuff like Dragon Tempest so they can just start, like, essentially fire breathing from afar and, and torching people down. Burning it turns them all into fire. Yeah. Fireballs. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And that's one of my favorite cards of all time. Woohoo! Fireball. Uh, uh, the next one is Concordant Crossroads. This is very simple. It's one green for an enchant. It's an enchant world because it's that <laughs> old. And it says creatures can attack or use abilities that require tap in the activation cost as soon as they come into play on your side. So all creatures get haste. haste. Yeah. That's so your opponent's just, and yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of those scenarios we've talked about where if you're better equipped to take bit make use of it then you're it's totally okay to run a card like this especially since you get to choose when to cast it yeah for so, one green oh my gosh yeah people shy away from cards like this because they're worried about the downside the upside is so big and you get to choose when you use it so this card's extremely powerful not to mention that most times when you play this card it's because you're trying to win that turn yeah i'm 90 percent. you drop the concordant crossroads and one other dragon and you already have three out and you just win yeah. Uh, the last couple of cards here on the enchantment engine, and we'll talk about a couple more enchantments later, but it's the damage doubler. So Furnace of Wrath and Dictate of the Twin Gods are both cards that essentially say uh, if a source would deal damage to a creature or a player, it, it, player, it deals double that damage uh, instead. So, that also stacks with double strike. Yeah. Because of the way the wording works. Because it does so, first strike damage and then... Yeah, it doubles up their first strike damage, Oof. then it doubles up their normal damage. So, you know, you can't give something that has double strike, double strike again, mm -hmm. but you can give it Dictate of the Twin Gods. Yeah, this yeah. If, if any of those two are out with Intet and Atarka and you get one swing in, it's instant death because it's 24 damage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, again, best case mentality scenario. But, you're, I mean, this deck is trying to ramp out huge things and just go big or go home. So. There's so many things that that just works with because everything's huge. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the main part of the deck, which is you have all these creatures. You get to play them once. Okay, cool. Maybe they get rid of something, but a turn later, someone plays more stuff out, and you're like, oh, great. Well, I guess I didn't really get to do as much as I wanted to in this case. Well, be unhappy no longer. Cause well, you have got... some of the most broken stuff ever on here. Yeah, I do. It's called <laughs> Abusing Flicker, and at the top of that list is Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. And if you guys don't know what Kiki Jiki does, he's a five drop, two, two haste uh, that people build degenerate decks around. He essentially gets to tap and put a token that's a copy of a target non legendary creature you control on the battlefield. It, that token has haste, and you sack it at the beginning of the next end step. So you don't care that you're getting rid of it. You just are happy that you can do another five damage from another Booger than Hellkite because you can copy it with Kiki Jiki. Yep. And yeah, the, Kiki's one of the most powerful cards ever printed. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be good in any deck that has any amount of enter the battlefield stuff. Yeah, he's he's a house. Uh, he essentially does the same thing that you're trying to do with other flicker cards here, like uh, Dead Eye Navigator. You want to read that one? Oh yeah, the old boatman. Yeah, the infamous boatman. Everyone's favorite slash most hated card. Yep, yeah, the D E N. It's four and two blue for a creature spirit. He's a five five. He has soul bound, so you can pair him with a creature. Uh, another unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield and they remain paired for as long as you control both of them so you basically pair them with any one single creature and then as long as dead eye navigator is paired with another creature each of those creatures has pay one in a blue exile this creature then return it to the battlefield under your control this is an extremely powerful card there's a couple reasons it's more powerful than some other flicker effects one is that it returns the creature immediately not in the end step so you're able to flicker multiple times like if you if a, a creature like rune flicker somebody out, they come back at the end step. Well, you can only do that once per turn. Mm -hmm. Deadeye, you can do it as often as you've got that mana. Yeah. And then the Deadeye Navigator actually gives the ability to itself, so it's very hard to remove because as long as you hold up a couple mana, anything they point at it, you flicker it out, yeah. and then it can't it can't be hit by that. So it's that's those two things are a reason why it's one of the more broken cards. Uh, it's just one of those cards that's so powerful. It's probably on the watch list, right? It has to be. I'm assuming it is. They've bound a lot of cards around it. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Sylvan Primordial and stuff like that. So 
it's it's just super super powerful yeah. yeah in this deck i don't see a ton of ways to go infinite so it's sort of a more fair version it's like you're going to be copying like a bell fire dragon or a boogered and hell kite or something and yeah, you're, you're not get... trying to go too infinite with it i think yeah. this guy with kiki actually does go infinite uh because every time kiki comes back he's untapped so he can make a new copy of but something. it costs you mana every time you do that correct so it's correct. not actually infinite you're um, right you're right yeah so that that those kind of interactions are fine i mean we've said this many times infinite's fine too it's all what's up for your up to your play group i mean our play group you know people go infinite and we're fine with it but if yeah. you're if yours isn't, then just don't go infinite. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's, it's your choice, really. You get to choose how many of the you know creature tokens you make with if you're going infinite with Kiki. You can be like, I make 10, or you can make I a billion. I mean, I've heard play groups that put a they put a uh, cap on the amount of times you can uh, do a loop. Oh, interesting. So that you, if you had Pestermite and Kiki Jiki out, which is an infinite combo, they have a cap. So they say you can only do any given loop five times. Mm -hmm. So then you can only get five Pestermites per turn or something like that. So that's something oh, that's to think cool. about if, if your playgroup doesn't like infinite. Yeah. Um, another card on here is the Conjurer's Closet. And oh, yeah. this is one of my favorite uh, just artifacts in general. It's a five drop. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So it's only on your end step. And you can only do one creature at a time, but it's enough. It, it does what you want. It's repeatable. It's pure value. Pure value, yeah. Yeah, you're just going to bounce a guy out, bring him back in. He's going to, you know, deal five damage as you want, divided among any number of targets. It's That's pretty That's pretty great. Yeah, I really like that card. Big There's card another card. card you've got on here, which I just don't think sees enough play. I don't understand why I haven't seen it more often. Really? It's Progenitor Mimic. Oh, yeah, this card is great. Yeah, it's four and Simic, so green and blue, six total for a zero zero Shapeshifter. It says when Progenitor Mimic enters the battlefield, or sorry, you may have Progenitor Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep, if this creature isn't a token, put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of this creature. So Progenitor Mimic copies something, and then every turn it makes one more copy of it. Yeah, but only off of the original copy. Right. Uh, not the original copy, it's the original card, because all of the copies are tokens. So the text says, if those, if it is a token, it says, nope, I don't make a copy of myself. But the Mimic itself just keeps popping them out. Um, it's I mean, crazy powerful. Why wouldn't you play this in any deck that has the Oracle of Moldiah, right? Like, you, why, why not just make six Oracle of Moldiah so they have to get rid of all of them? <laughs> I mean, it, anything with an enter the battlefield effect, though, is just like every turn I'm mm -hmm. going to do X. I'm going to deal five damage yeah. to everything. Or and whatever. afterwards leave a giant dragon in yeah. my wake. It's it's pretty nuts. Yeah, I really like the, the mimic. I mean, maybe it's just because he costs a little too much that people don't like him. I don't know. You I, can I, copy other people's stuff. Yeah, you know, I don't know. He, he just doesn't see enough play. I don't. I don't get it. I also think it's really powerful and something that people don't realize. And when the card says it comes in as a copy or anything, it just is of any creature. It doesn't care if it has hexproof. It yep. doesn't care if it has shroud because yep. it gets around all of that. So that's one of those like sort of powerful interactions. That I think a lot of people sort of skip out on when they look at cards like these. Um, next up, we also have the mimic vat. And this it's is mimics everywhere. It's yeah, just mimics, mimics everywhere. Mimics and giant dragons. I'm trying to create Sarkin's world, Josh. I'm trying to. I think create you're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> the world that he wants to have. Now I fly with dragons. With dragons. Uh, Mimic Vat is essentially uh, does the same thing. I'll leave it to you guys to look it up. But essentially, can take any card that, that exits the battlefield in the graveyard and it exiles it, and then you can put a token that's a copy of it into your. Yeah, you sort of make play. one kiki jiki of it. Per, yeah. Per. Per turn, or but per for three mana, you can get someone's best guys as soon as someone kills, you know, yep. that guy in the battlefield, and you just the, can make one of those whenever you want. Yeah, pr pretty nice. Uh, and finally, we have the uh, the double up of parallel lives and doubling season, and both of these are essentially here because we have all of these token generators. Because if you create one token, what's better than one token, Josh? Uh, four, four tokens, five tokens, six tokens. Essentially, it's just saying. Hey, that thing you just made, get to make a double. Oh one. man, with progenitor mimic, it's so brutal. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm making a bogart in hellkite. It's dealing five damage when it comes in. Oh, I'm making four of those per turn. Yep, that's twenty damage I get to a side <laughs> per turn. Like it's insanity. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Uh, that's why Splinter Tune is also in the deck. Basically, it, it. I'm trying to trying to break th some things. I'm trying to make it because the thing is with a deck like this. Once people sniff out what you're doing, you do not have long to You live. just need to win with pure you, power. Yeah, at you need that to point, win yeah. with pure power. And this is one of the ways to do it without actually going infinite. So that's why I kind of wanted to go this route. Um, it's because you can do it. And having the blue accessible to you, that's why it was really important to be teamer, is really nice because of Dead Eye Navigator, Progenitor Mimic, um, the. Uh, uh, 
the one card that we, of course, put in every deck, aka the... Prophet of Crufix! Prophet of Crufix, yeah. So basically, all these things are quite nice for getting the... Uh, Getting, getting the job done. Is getting like the job say? done right. I, I like that you have Teamer Ascendancy on here also. We oh, yes, that's right. We haven't talked about it yet, but... Um, you want to read it? Yeah, it's a, a blue, a green, and a red, so Teamer for an enchantment. It says, creatures you control of haste, but also says, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Very important. Oh, man, it's so good in this deck because Progenitor Mimic will... will um, yeah. It doesn't say non-token, so it'll trigger mm -hmm. that too. And all your creatures have four or more power. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're trying to create copies of everyone, then this—I mean, it's Team of Ascendancy is waiting for you in this deck. When you flicker or something for an effect, it also adds draw a card onto that effect most of the time. Yeah, pretty great. Uh, another category I had on here was going long because there will be some cases where you actually need to survive for a longer amount of time. And so I have a couple of cards on here. One is one is Creeping Renaissance, which is one of my new sort of pet cards in EDH that I, that I really like. It's three and two green for a sorcery. Choose a permanent type. Return all cards of the chosen type from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's it's kind of like what are you gonna name, board. Jimmy? Um, goblins. <laughs> I just want Kiki Jiki. <laughs> no, you could just name creatures. Yeah, it's true. It's that's a permanent right. type. That's yeah, right. it's not a tribe. Oh, that's right. It's I so totally, good. I totally misread my own favorite pet card. <laughs> Even if it was um, dragons, it would be good in this track. Yeah, but exactly. This is this is better than that. I mean, the other great part is this has flashback for five and two green, which means you can play it from its graveyard again for your flashback cost, and then you uh, exile it's it. It's so good. Yeah, it's like it's it's great because you're gonna see board wipes if you play this deck, and being able to restock your hand and get back that that tempo to just sort of start the engine again is very important uh this next one is a new one i like it it's a shamanic revelation I almost said revolution <laughs> it is a revolution the revolution will not be shamanic sorry <laughs> it's three and two green for a sorcery it says draw a card for each creature you control it has ferocious so if you control a, a, a creature with power four or greater you also gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater so if you have five dragons out, you're going to draw five cards and gain 20 life. Yeah, that's big timing. And that, that's big timing in EDH, too. Like yeah. Specifically, because, I mean, this... Not that viable in standard, right? How many creatures are going to have? It costs power? too much in standard. Yeah, but in exactly. our five mana is nothing here. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. You're, and ideally, you'll have a few creatures out. And even if it's just five mana draw, like, four cards, that's totally fine. Oh, like, yeah. And gain, gain like, uh, 20 life yeah. or something? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, definitely. 16, um, right? Your math was better. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes, Josh, my math was better. <laughs> um, also, we want to cheat some stuff out in the play. So we have See the Unwritten, Quicksilver Amulet. I like um, how this category is called cheating. Yeah, just called cheating. Yeah. It's not cheating in the play. You're just cheating. Just cheating. I you just cheater. put Kiki Jiki under here. Cheaty face. Every time you play, yeah, cheaty face. Every Kiki time you Jiki play Kiki Jiki, it feels like you're cheating. It does feel like cheaty face. So powerful. He's so good. Um, Every time you get Kiki Jiki out, I'm like, guys, guys just trust me. Yeah. We're it's about funny, to die. How many times when I'm playing with new people, they're like, eh, it's just a two-two. No, I'm like, no, we're all about to die. Uh. <laughs> And they all died. <laughs> and I'm like, man, Josh, you should have phrased your argument better. Yeah, what geez. happened, man? I said everything. What? They didn't believe me. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, cards you might not think of. Uh, Earthquake is one of my favorite new uh, board wipes. It, uh, it's X and red to I don't deal. know if it's new. Yeah, it's not new, but it's one of my new favorites to play, uh, specifically in decks that can do it. It deals X damage to each creature without flying in each player. So you have to be careful because you you could actually kill yourself doing this if you're not careful. Or you could bring everybody else to a level where all your dragons who are flying and don't get hit by it kill them. Pretty much. Not to mention if you get rid of... I mean, if you do Earthquake for like one and you're going against your pinger deck, mm -hmm. it's like, see, Josh, sorry, buddy. For uh, two mana, I just wiped your whole board because you got a bunch of one ones. Oh, man. Yeah, so Earthquake's nice. It doesn't really affect you as much as it's going to affect someone else. It's a nice one-sided board wipe, and those are, of course, my favorite, especially when they're nice and cheap. This next one's interesting. Felden of the Third Path. It's yeah. uh, one and two red for a legendary creature. It's a two, three. But you can tap two and a red and tap Felden of the Third Path and put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types, and it gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So it key, sort of kiki-jiki something in your library. Mm -hmm. Or, sorry, in your graveyard. I should put this in the... Sign um, of the Ur Dragon deck. Oh, right, because you're going to have so many guys in there that you want to pop out. Yeah, it's, this is a really good card in this deck. I, I wouldn't have thought... You know what? You did really good with the naming of this category, cards you might not think of, because I did <laughs> not think of this card. <laughs> There's another one then in here that you might not have thought of, and it's Sundial of the Infinite. Two mana and artifact for one uh, colorless. You can tap it and end the turn. Activate this ability only oh, during yeah. the turn. Oh, yeah. This card is uh, very sneaky powerful. Mm-hmm. 
Now, usually this would see like, why would you just want to end the turn? Well, when you have anything that says at the end of your turn, sacrifice this token, guess what? Sundial the Infinite lets you keep it. And also, all kinds of shenanigans occur where somebody tries to do something on your turn, mm -hmm. and you just tap this and you end the turn. It exiles anything that's on the stack. Yeah. So it just ends the turn right there. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's, this, it's just sort of this like this catch all. It both helps with protection and also just helps keep your tokens and creatures on the battlefield when they need to be. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah especially when you have stuff like Kiki and Splinter Twin and Felden that gets rid of those tokens. Sundial is definitely one of those cards. I mean, I almost want to just build tutors into this deck just to get that card each time because that card is broken in this yeah. deck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course, Oracle of Moldaya. Yep. One of the great ramp cards ever created. Three and a green for an Elf Shaman 2 2 says you may play a, an additional land on each of your turns. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library if it's a land card. Yeah. So, you're so it's kind of like um, the Corsair of Crufix and Azusa put together. Yeah. And Exploration kind of. Well, yeah. Azusa is like Exploration, but yeah. Yeah. So the nice thing is that you just get to put as much stuff out as possible. Um, if you guys are looking to build this deck, actually, I would say hold off on the Oracle because I believe it's going to be reprinted in Modern Masters too. Oh, are you making a prophetic call here? You're pretty good. Call. You called the dual face planeswalkers. Yeah, that was that was a lucky one though. I think, <laughs> I think we're going to see a lot of World Way cards reprinted. Um, I would not be surprised if the Oracle was amongst them. Uh, also, Azusa. Although I don't think they actually. No, I, th I don't think Azusa is going to be reprinted. But Oracle, I think is Azusa definitely, is pretty spendy. I think Azusa and Stoneforge are both sort of up there for on the chopping block. Of these guys, might get. You might see these guys again very soon. Hmm. Or these ladies, I guess, in this case. Right. These ladies. These are ladies. The most powerful cards in Magic, by the way, oftentimes are ladies. I like it. It's very fun. Um, how to combat this deck. It's pretty easy. Hushwing Griff. Torpor Orb. Anything that stops uh, Enter the Battlefield effects is going to be yeah. really tough for this deck. Although, you got some play. I mean, they yeah. might stop the Enter the Battlefield effect, but it's still a 5-5 five, five flying creature. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point, Josh. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, I mean, uh, it won't be it won't be optimized, but it'll still be able to do stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of the other car the other problem with this deck is that a lot of these cards are very expensive. Yeah, it's not a cheap deck. Yeah, it um, goes up to eight mana for a lot of them, seven, six. Yeah. So you want to you want to get some super ramp in here. I might not have enough right now. Also, because you're playing blue, you might want to have some counters in here, but we'll see. about yeah, that. Yeah, maybe just a swan song and a counter spell and call it good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah, this thing looks good. Um, it looks really fun, too. Like, you're going to play a dragon, like, after turn six or seven, you're just going to play a dragon every turn. Yeah, hopefully. And then copy it every, you know, every turn you don't play one, you're just going to make a copy of one that you've already got. Yeah, the hope is that you just have a dragon out, and if you just top deck any of the copy cards, you're more than happy because all of your dragons do sweet stuff. So hopefully you'll be able to make some kind of play out of it, out of just what's on the battlefield, and you won't have to get too tricky with it because all everything is on the card, if that makes sense. It's funny because this deck is built like one of my decks where the general itself is just not that important to it. Yeah, actually, Every once in a while, you might smack them and get a free spell, but mm -hmm. you don't even have to. Like, everything else works together so well. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was actually funny when I was building it, especially with the new tuck rules and everything. I was like, well, maybe I should make it super themed around the general, and I couldn't find any teamer dragons. And um, you're like, I need to play Sarkin. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the other option is you actually make this an Animar deck. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and just put a little more like low creatures to ramp out, and all of a sudden you have... I mean, Animar is in the deck, by the way. I should, right, <laughs> I should right. Know. Animar's in there. Because if you get them out turn three and start casting dragons, guess what? You're going to win. <laughs> or if you get them out, you know, even a little bit later than that. Yeah, because yeah. all your dragons start casting two, costing two or three mana. Yeah. Oh, and, please. Yep. Oh, that's right, Josh. Oh, please. Does this mean you're going to take apart your Animar deck, though? Nope. I'm going to buy another Animar. Uh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, a guy can hope. Yeah, you can hope, and <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, I was thinking of potentially converting Animar into it, but I, I actually think I'd, I'd rather just have a dragon deck because I've never had one, and I am kind of a Timmy. I grew up playing red and dragons, and Shivan dragons were like some of my favorite cards. Oh, yeah. You should put Shivan in here just because of the throwback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I went through the same evolution where I'm basically going to spend a lot of money building my dragon deck now. <laughs> So thanks. Twenty years into the, the things future. I do for this show. If you would only could have gone back to your child self and been like, you won't even know what I'm going to do with cards when you're like <laughs> the cards that you're trading for. Guess what? I just buy them. Like, oh, what? <laughs> From where? <laughs> From this thing called the internet. <laughs> What's what? that? Yeah. You really want to know, kid? Oh man, now I'm dating myself. Yeah. Also, my my voice was never that high. Oh, I really? just want to make that clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mine was. I did not sound sure. like Mickey Mouse at any point <laughs> in my life.
Okay. Just wanted just wanted to make that statement. Just yeah, doubly double down on that <laughs> statement. Yeah, so that is the Intet the Dreamer deck, aka Sarkin Unbroken. Just wanted to get Big Daddy Sarkin out here. Um and, you know, the other dream is having a doubling season out, playing Sarkin, and then just immediately ulting him. Oh, that'll be so awesome when it happens. I mean, it's gonna, I'm going to lose that game, but it's going to be <laughs> awesome. It's going to be like, now he will fly with dragons. He will now definitely fly with dragons. That's right. <sighs> I'm a little sad. Why? What's that? Oh, Dragon, Dragon Week. Week's over. Man. It's the end of <laughs> it Dragon Week. It started so soon <laughs> compared to, to like when we started recording these podcasts, which is like two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we recorded both episodes on the same night. So yeah. for us, Dragon Week actually just occurred over a 90-minute period. Yeah, it was Dragon Hours. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's a little trade secret we just gave away right there. Yeah, that is true. What should we do? Should we continue Dragon Week in spirit? No, because oh. otherwise, what it's, does the week part of Dragon oh, Week you're right, mean? You're right. That's a really good point. <laughs> Sorry, Dragon Week. We'll see you again next year. Yeah. Hey, if you guys have other themed weeks you want us to go for, maybe that could be something fun. Just oh, let geez. us know. We uh, might get ourselves in trouble. We're going to do Good Stuff Week, where we just talk about <laughs> good cards. <laughs> Is it, that's actually called every other week of the show. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about, we'll, we'll make this uh, this week's podcast about the Prophet of Crufix. We're going to call it Prophet of Crufix Week. And that's actually our. Get, that's not the previous thirty-seven episodes have been profit or crew fix. We mentioned it probably in at least thirty of the episodes. And I mean, we mentioned it today. Good. Well, thank goodness you keep building five color decks because guarantee we'll be able to talk about it then. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did not put it on my list for the for sign of the Ur dragon. Are you insane? Yeah, what I the, I had it on there and I was like, you know what, just doesn't fit in with the rest of what this deck's trying to do. You know what, you are actually more dedicated to the Vorthos than I am because here I am with Splinter Twin. Like Splinter Twin has a has a picture of a woman being doubled, and I'm making a two dragons out of it. You so. might make an Oracle of Moldaya. That's true. I probably not, but you could. That is very true. Yeah. So you know, maybe maybe we're both Vorthosy enough. Uh, anyway, let us know if you guys have any of your own dragon builds featuring the new dragon lords or the yellow dragons in the comments below on RocketJump.com. Um, or you can tweet it at us or send us an email at commandcast at rocketjump.com. Josh and I read all of our emails. Josh is usually the one replying, but I am also always going through them. And by the time I hit reply, I look at Josh's reply. I'm like, well, that was more than adequate because that was a really good response. <laughs> I, yep, yeah, I respond. With great responses too, man. I would totally email you if I was a listener of the show. <laughs> like, yo, Josh, I got the deck. Hook me up. And be like, yo, is the, uh, is the Prophet of the Crew fix in there? Maybe you should take a look. Maybe at you should try the profit. <laughs> I do prefer the comment section on Rocket Jump. If, and it's only because that way when people are going through mm -hmm. our old episodes and, you know, we see the numbers and a lot of our old episodes get watched every week because, you know, it never gets old, right? Like yeah, we we're, do, an like, eternal some, we're an eternal yeah. format. So if you've just found the show, then when we broke down our Animar deck, it still works, you know, four or five months later. You know, there might be a few new cards you'd rather put in there, but most of that information is still valid. So yeah. then they go to the comment section and they can find out all this awesome information that's been contributed by the rest of the community. So yeah, And the replies that we've made and other people replying to. By the way, you guys are awesome. I love seeing you guys talk with each other within the community. It's really, really cool to see. Yeah, it's just like it's like crowdsourcing all these awesome ideas to build, you know, sweet decks. So yeah, totally. pretty cool. Um, Very exciting. All right, you want to go to the end step? Yep, end step. Oh nope, nope, because I'm hitting the door of destinies. No wait, not door of destinies. I meant I'm hitting sundial of the infinite, and we're <laughs> skipping the end step. Dragon Week is here forever. It's here to stay. <laughs> Oh did, boy! Did that work? Did that no, actually? Happen? It didn't actually work. We're at the end step, and I—I guess... I could see you trying to think of something. I know. I was like, I oh wait, he's end like, step. We talked about this. Clean he's up. He's looking around the room. Like, what do I see? What do we talk about. You can talk uh, about air conditioners. <laughs> I could talk about a hammocks, ir ironing board. A you hammock. should talk about Freddy's freaking clock. You know what? We are going to talk about the Q lock too. Freddy, my brother, has been building. Uh, this one thing of, is unbelievable. One of the coolest clocks you can imagine. It essentially is this uh, plexiglass front that's black and it has all these words, uh, sort of like a crossword, not a crossword, they, uh, uh, what are those things called where you look for words in the jumble of letters? Uh, crossword? Are they crosswords? I think so. What am I thinking of? I crossword. Think... Crosswords. So it's kind of like a crossword that has all these words across the top, like it is noon, 12, 1, 5 p.m. Uh, and stuff. And what the clock does is it's programmed to essentially light up the correct time when it actually happens. So it has this really cool effect where you see the word segmented across the whole sort of square grid. And it'll always tell you the time. And when it's a new time, it'll turn off certain lights and turn on other ones. And it'll light up a new part of the uh, the phrase to make it work. For instance, if it's noon, it'll say, the words will actually light up that say, it is 12 o'clock. Yeah. That 
it's freaking awesome. And Freddie saw this thing online, and then he made his own. Because <laughs> it cost, yeah, it was a $1,500 clock. Freddie was like, screw that. I'll, I'll just, just make one. I'll just buy the components, put it together myself, uh, crowdsource from the internet, because other people have done similar projects, and make his own. When he told me he was going to make one, because he was clicking around, and he's oh, like, right, check right. out this clock, dude. He's showing me pictures on the internet. He's like, I'm going to make one. My brain went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brain was like, Sure, dude. I'm gonna be here next week, and we're never gonna speak of this again. <laughs> it was just a little. It was just like whimsy. It's like yeah. it's gone now. I've wanted to make things too, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But then I got here the next week, and he's. It's like he's got a working model of it. All he needs is a frame. It's yeah. insanity. We, it we'll post insanity. in the show notes. The thing is sweet. Yeah, the Q Lock too. It's a really cool clock, and it's de- it's a DIY project. Because if you're like a budding ele- engineer, electrician, <laughs> you know, you could actually get it done. It's a do. It's a do it yourself if you're like crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean the. Cr- crazy thing and just to expound on a little more is that like uh you see these other builds and people have to custom cut out like the slats and stuff for it but you can actually just go to these laser cutting websites and give them a pattern and they'll cut out the perfect pattern for you to use out of cardboard or whatever get it shipped to you and boom you've got this piece made by someone else with its fancy machine and you saved a ton of time yeah it's crazy what they can do now with that stuff yeah. it reminds me when we were over playing uh edh with the five commanders guys mm-hmm. um, oh that's right he had this sweet spell book that was uh laser cut from wood that actually came apart and became a play mat yeah not to mention he made it himself with his own laser cutter it was it's pretty sweet um that's another thing we should mention i know we were only going to do one end step thing, but I'm going to do mine. And it's the five commanders podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Our buddies, Phil and Casey, and I think Dan and Brenton and Ben, I might have screwed up a few of those names. Okay. I've only met two of them. We've played EDH with them a couple times. Uh, They have a really good podcast. It's Mm -hmm. also commander focused. So definitely like, you know, after you're done with our podcast, you probably want more commander uh, content. Theirs is great. So yep. fivecommanders.com. Go check those guys out. They do really yeah. awesome stuff. They just brought in Sheldon as well uh, last week um, and talked to him about the tuck rules. And stuff. Yeah. So they get some sweet, legit guests on there. And they're pretty good. I mean, you know, I'd say. Yeah. Those when games we, play, we played were very fun. Yeah. They, they, they hold their own. They kick us around a little bit mm-hmm. sometimes. So. Hopefully they'll be going to GP Vegas. By the way, have you guys gotten your GP Vegas ticks yet? Because you should. Do it. We'll see you there. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. And that wraps it up for Dragon Week. Let's go. Run downstairs and go rawr and scare everyone. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you won't scare everyone. All right, guys. See you next week. All right, bye. Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com. Or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans.